Hi everybody and welcome back to Thai TV. I'm Daniel Bergman and today I thought we would do something really fun but also quite patience testing. Uh, we're gonna tie a, a micro version of a game changer that's also inspired by the now world-renowned bait uh, Miura's mouse. Uh, it has a really chubby nose in the front which, which push push a lot of water and gives great movement to the uh, soft tail of the fly and also um, when you strip it hard it uh, sort of jerks in all directions and yeah it's totally erratic in its in its uh, pattern uh, which is really fun to fish and makes the fish turn crazy uh, like works really well on all predatory space species like uh, pff, trout of course uh, perch uh, caught rainbow trouts in even in in put and take waters on these guys especially this little yellow one is a real killer there um, yeah but <laughs> as i said uh, it's quite challenging to tie, not really re anything that's difficult, but it takes quite a lot of time. Um, many movements, many repetitions, but yeah, uh, it's worth it in the end, since they're so damn fun to fish. Okay, let's try to tie this little mini, mini mouse, or mini mouse changer. Yeah, yeah, mini mouse changer, that's good. Okay, um, we're gonna, the whole tail is built up by uh, these articulated micro spines from uh, Fly, uh, Flyman Fishing Company. Um, all of these can be found in a, one of these starter packs where you have, uh, let's see, two different sizes, six and eight millimeter uh, long shanks and also a tail shank. Um, and then we're gonna use uh, hook and everything to that, but we'll come to that later. Uh, the thing with these flies is that you have to tie them in, you need to tie them backwards. So you need to start with the tail and it's also necessary to, to sort of reverse it. So you tie the fly pointing in the wrong direction compared to when you tie in a hook. Uh, it can be a little bit tricky to set your mind to this, but yeah, you get the hang of it. Uh, we'll see if I got the hang of it. I'll do my best. Okay, for thread I'm using like a quite straightforward uh, Textreme 60 fluorescent red, I think it is. Flu hot orange. Uh, there's a reason for this. <laughs> it uh, might look a little bit strange uh, on the fly like this when it's dry but when it gets in the water uh, it almost looks like it has a fluorescent glow spine it's pretty cool i'll show you later on with with the uv tor torch as well to start off i'm gonna do the tail of um, lateral scale small opal mirage i hope You'll find, uh, of course, you'll find all the exact materials in the show description below. Um, so even if, even if I say something wrong, what's correct is in the, in the show description. <laughs> okay, I, I've cut this in half uh, and folded it. I'm gonna use uh, quite long fibers much longer than I actually need and that's only because I need and want something to hold on to later on when I'm gonna do the whole <coughs> trimming process and that's a big part of the whole fly okay I there's you, there's a little point on this one facing upwards and I try to get uh, the bunch on one bunch on my side of that little point and I double the the flash boot bunch and tie in uh, the other part of the bunch on the other side of the little point there okay that should be quite enough 
I leave it like that. Um, and we're going to build a whole fly of something that's called uh, uh, Chocolate Game Changer Chenille uh, from Hairline. Pretty cool material. Uh, I would say this is sort of a raw length. Uh, so you tie it in uh, full length, uh, which can be a little tricky on these small uh, spines, but it will work out quite fine in the end. Um, and then you trim everything down. Okay, I take this big chenille cord and try to find which direction is pay pointing downwards. And it looks like this is the end I want to tie it in. I strip some of the fibers off. And then I try to tie it down as close to the back as possible without turning everything around. Yeah, it should stay there in place. And we now we only have like a few millimeters. To, to wind this on, which is part of the challenge. Uh, so I try to fold it backwards. As I wind forward and I think there's like room for one and a half turn maximum. Then I try to find my way in between here with my thread. And <laughs> try to find my way in there with my scissors and trim off the excess. Uh, it's easier said than done. Okay eventually. Okay, let's see here. We have some space. Try to sort of stroke everything backwards to release all the loose fibers. And I hold everything backwards and I do a couple of turns in front of everything here. And if necessary, maybe tie some of the chenille down. Then I'm going to do a whip finish with my fingers because it can be a bit tricky. If you don't have a big whip finisher, it can be a bit tricky to get the thread where you want it. And to guide the thread to where I want it, I use a bodkin. Steer it in close to the little shank, tighten it and carefully trim off the thread. I'm gonna just take a little, little drop of super glue just to seal that th tying thread because <laughs> yeah since it takes quite a while to tie one of these I don't want them to get ruined by the first trout chooses to hit it. Okay, that's the first part, the tail. Now, uh, let's move on to the next part. Um, and this is a six millimeter shank. It's really tiny. And I fasten it in the in the jaws of the vise in the round loop. And then I use a small bodkin to open up because the shank is open. So I open up the shank with my needle 
with my bodkin and I thread the tail uh, tail shank onto the six millimeter shank. So I have the triangular uh, loop in the back. Okay. Now we're gonna try to tie in the thread without tying down too much of the fibers from the tail. Of course you can always cut off stuff that get tied down. Okay, that's good. I go all the way back on the shank, back in this case meaning my right. Take the chenille again, make sure you got the right end of it. Just strip some of the fibers in the end loose so you get the core of the chenille and tie that core in as far back as possible. Okay, now it's pretty much locked on there. Stroke everything backwards and I go forward with my thread and hang it away. I, it's probably even less room on this one than on the tail shank, so one, one and a half turn is probably more than enough here. Okay, and try to get in there and between all the fibers, crisscross your way down to the shank and let's see. That should be tied in pretty well. Try to find the end of it, of the chenille, and cut it off. So hope we have some room to finish it off. We actually do. It's a miracle. Careful. And a big we finish. Try not to trap any of the fibers, which is <laughs> more or less only something that is theoret theoretically possible. And I do the same thing again as on the last one. Uh, I just put some super glue on the little, little head here just to make sure it doesn't break. Okay, uh, from now on, I'm gonna do uh, two more shanks, uh, two eight millimeter shanks, and that's an exact repetition of what I just did. Um, so, well, uh, just fast forward and show you a time lapse of that part. And then we're going to move on to attaching the whole thing to the hook. So let's go. Okay, so now uh, that's the tail part. Um, looks like a big dish brush or something. 
okay, let's get this on to a hook. I'm gonna use a uh, partridge attitude extra, which is a short shank hook. Uh, that has a really nice taper uh, to the back of it. Works really well for this kind of flies. This is a size 6, because we're keeping things quite small. There we go. Yes, very good. Okay, to attach this uh, to the hook, I'm going to use... Uh, this is a 030 uh, 3 uh, for carbon, but you could you could use uh, mono if you want, or you could use a thin wire. Doesn't really matter. Um, this part won't take much abuse. It won't be put under that much strain, uh, so mono works fine. Uh, only. If you can call that a disadvantage with mono is that it um, it uh, sort of gets brittle um, with time. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do uh, just to make sure that it's at least properly attached to the hook is that I'm gonna shoe uh, the ends of this just a little bit to make it a little bit more grippy when I tie it in. Don't try to bite it off because your dentist will bill you big time. Just roughen it up. It's gonna make it stick there much much better. Okay, uh, let's get tying. Start with Attach, attaching the thread all the way in the front of the hook. Wind it backwards to, yeah, like around the barb. Uh, maybe just behind the barb, a little bit down in the hook bend. Uh, to prevent it from, from tangling around the hooks and later on. Then I thread the, the nylon, or the fluorocarbon in this case, uh, through the eye of the shank on the tail. Well, let's see, where do we have the ends? Try to catch both ends on the same length. Stroke all the fibers backwards. And I place this right in the hook bend. Move over to my left hand, tie it down with a couple of turns, and if it's too far back, I just uh, pull the ends a little bit and then tighten it down. So we really don't want a big loop here, just a little, little tiny one. Then I, if I've trapped something, I tie it, I cut it off, and then I just do a couple of turns underneath the loop, just to lift it a little, little bit. I go forward uh, with tight turns, a little bit too tight turns. Sometimes easy to forget you're not on gel spun thread, especially when you're tying big flies. Okay, but I think this can easily be saved. Everything is going to be covered in chenille anyway, so it's no beauty contest. Just make sure that the 
loop is securely in place. Can't go anywhere. Okay. Time for this baby again. Same procedure. Strip off. So I have the core. Tie in the core as far back as you can. Then I go forward with my thread and then start wrapping and doubling and stroking everything backwards. And if you see that, that uh, a lot of the fibers get trapped uh, facing forward, you can always use like a uh, comb or a bodkin uh, to release them. Because if you trap them down hard, you can't really, uh, can't really release them later on. Some of the fibers will brush through and release later on, but uh, it's good to get as much as possible pointing outwards. Gives us more to work with further on. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave like, uh, let's see, what, how much can this be? I'm gonna brush this a little bit. Uh, maybe like two, two and a half millimeters up to the hook eye. And trim this white snake off. Yay. Be gone. Done with you. Uh, now I'm gonna try to do like a transition between uh, this uh, chenille body and uh, the foam disc that I'm gonna uh, put in the front. I'm gonna build that up with uh, predator dubbing. Um, oh, where is I need I need white as well. Where do I have the white one? There we go. I'm gonna start off with the red row. Just to give some more fluorescence in there. Pulling off out a decent lump here. And splitting it in the middle. Laying it together again, and then splitting it in the middle again, and laying it together. And you have like quite a short stack here. I would say it's like two and a half, two and a half centimeters. Uh, it's an average. And I tie this in on the like. <laughs> with the majority on the underside of the hook shank. It's gonna spread out all around anyway, but I want the majority to to sit on the underside. Tighten it down properly. I'm gonna have some black predator dubbing and do the same thing make sure all the fibers are as even as possible just by pulling them apart and laying them on top of each other again I'm gonna split it Uh, 
And as I said in previous videos, if you can't pull it apart, <laughs> you can cut it. Or you have too much, or you are, you need to sort of hit the gym. Okay, same length as the red one. I do the same thing, but on the upper side of the hook. Touch it with a couple of turns, make sure it doesn't turn around on the other side of the hook, on your away part, on your away side. Fold it backwards, fold everything backwards, and wind your thread in front of it as tight as possible. There we go. You can help out with your fingers and give it a proper push as well. Okay, I think that's quite good. Okay, I'm gonna take a, a small bunch of black more. Um, then I'm gonna take like a really thin one of white. Just because it will look a little bit more worked than when I trim it down later on. Make sure that you have at least like one and a half millimeter uh, until you reach the hook guy. Otherwise, um, you might push. Oh, that's too much. You might push all the fibers back. A little bit too much with the with the little disc we're gonna do soon. Okay, there we go. Okay, that looks pretty, pretty good. Okay, Whew. let's finish it off. Now I have like a little head here, uh, which doesn't really hurt at all. Um, okay, uh, the hard front on the uh, <laughs> face of this guy, I'm gonna do of, where did I put them? Didn't I have them here? Sorry. I'm gonna do that of uh, booby eyes. Uh, this is um, veneer size medium uh, booby eyes, which is quite a good size. Funny thing is that the medium seems to vary a little bit between batches, but yeah, you'll see if it's too big in or if it's too small. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna make sure that I have one that is quite flat and quite straight. That's good. I'm gonna take a razor blade. Be careful with these kids because they're sharp as hell. I'm gonna take the razor blade and I'm gonna 
cut a slice of this one uh, like one and a half millimeter thick and try to cut it as straight as possible oh there we go that should be quite good yes sir okay now we have a little foam disc here I'm gonna take my bodkin uh, the a little bit fatter one I'm gonna try to do a hole in the dead center of this <laughs> Black on black is always really easy. There. Yeah. I'm gonna push the needle through here. Make sure we expand this a little bit. And I'm leaving this on there for a little while. I'm gonna take some super glue and apply it just behind the hook eye on the little head and also let it spill up on the predator dubbing a little bit ideally you want the, the dubbing to sort of stick a little bit to the foam disc Should be enough. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't pour it out. I'm gonna push this on over the hook eye. Make sure to get it on there before it dries. And then I push everything forward. Hopefully, yeah, I'm gonna help out a little bit. I was a little bit too, too cheap with the glue. Just pad the back of the foam disc with some glue. So this is to sort of imitate the, the big bulky um, bucktail head you have on the uh, Miura's mouse. It's quite tricky to do something similar on such a small fly as this. So this is the easiest solution I've come up with so far. Okay, uh, well that's it for the tying part. Now begins what can easily become a never-ending trimming history. Uh, we're gonna trim this down to, to less than half its size. That's gonna take a while. So I suggest we, we hit time-lapse mode again. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna replace or sort of relocate the fly from uh, being attached in the hook bend to being attached to the hook eye. Um, this way I can actually hold the long flashable tail and trim from behind and forwards which make it much easier to get a nice taper on the whole thing. Okay, so let's get going. Before I start trimming, I just take this hand little brush and brush everything through. Problem is uh, this chenille 
is quite slick. You need to have like a really sharp scissor. The whole idea is to, to get it thinner in the back and taper become fatter in the front. It's a really good thing <coughs> to have a vacuum cleaner uh, close at hand when you're doing this or tie at a friend's place and leave straight afterwards. Okay, we're getting closer. Thing is with this is like trimming deer hair. You can go on forever until you've taken away too much. Yeah. I think we'll say that will do. I'm gonna put it in the vise again. Proper way. Oh, it's easier to get a good look at it from the top. Make the final adjustments. See, so it's even on both sides and also under. It's quite good. Okay, the finishing touches. I'm gonna trim the tail. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna try to uh, molest it a little bit. Uh, hurt it a little bit. And then I'm gonna trim to it to proper length. So it's pointing all over. That's good. Yay. Okay, next. I'm gonna do sort of a uh, to accentuate, accentuate the back. I'm gonna take a black marker and just paint it a little bit on the back. This uh, nylon chenille here isn't that super uh, friendly with the with the ink. Uh, but I think it turns out quite cool anyway. Yeah, enough is enough. Let's see. Yeah, cool. Okay, and of course it needs eyes. Uh, these are 4.8 millimeter uh, fluorescent red. Uh, epoxy eyes with a white pupil. Transfer it to Bodkin. Some super glue. Be careful. Just a little drop. Then I'm gonna place it just behind the foam disc. on the lateral line of the whole fly. Okay, but that should be enough. Other side. Okay, cool. What did I say about trimming? Stop it! Done. Okay, there we have it, folks. The mini mouse changer. Pretty cool little critter. Oh, I thought I would show you this as well. The whole reason uh, why I choose the fluorescent red tying thread. Do, 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 do. It has a fluorescent spine. Hey, okay. Uh, if you have the patience, <laughs> try to tie a couple of these because they're really, really fun to, to fish. Uh, I would say they're much more fun to fish than to actually uh, tie. <laughs> uh, you can tie them in all varieties of colors, and of course, you uh, you can do bigger ones as well. Um, 
probably would work if you do bigger versions for Pike as well, uh, or even bigger for for like Sander or stuff, or salt water, of course. Uh, pushes a lot of water for being such a small little streamer, uh, and uh, yeah, moves like crazy. Has the moves like Jagger. <laughs> Uh, if you want to win this flight, uh, just leave a comment in the box below and make sure to follow Fly Dressing on Instagram. Okay, that's about it for me. Over and out.